listening to the weather forecast and um, whereas tomorrow is fog patches, today is fog um, and it will definitely be a motor um, and okay fair enough motoring does get you to where you want to go but tomorrow sounds saleable so so at the very worst tomorrow we're motoring just like we would be today but if we're lucky tomorrow we're sailing Ah, well, it's been a rough start to the day. Um, we think there must have been like a lot sort of overfally rip thing going on just north of Canna's entrance uh, because there's a heck of a lot of swell there and there's a lot of changes in depth in that area. Uh, parts of it are 100 metres deep, parts of it are 25 and we think that was the main cause of it. But we're now further out. We have swell coming that way so it's, it's on the beam which is never pleasant. Um, we're going to Boisdale or Boisdale, we'll find out the pronunciation when we get there. Uh, the reason it could have a French pronunciation is because apparently it's where the young pretender Bonnie Prince Charlie landed for the 1745 Jacobite Rebellion. Um, and since he was spending a lot of time, probably grew up in France, it could well be Boisdale, a French pronunciation. We'll find out later. Uh, it's calmed down a bit. We've got a reef in the Jenny and a reef in the main. We're still doing 5.3 knots. Which we're happy with. We were doing nearly six earlier, but we were well over. We were sort of well healed over. Twenty and degrees. Twenty degrees, which is our. <laughs> that's where we start to feel a little bit not queasy. Just we like the boat to be more upright, and this kind of boat sails better more upright. You start healing her over. She starts just making leeway and slowing down. Yeah, you're going quicker, but you're going that way. You're not going that way. So. We flattened the boat up a bit, it slows it down a little bit, but our velocity made good toward our destination will be better, so, you know, it swings and roundabouts. Um, um, we went past uh, Canna Compass Hill, uh, did that cause any issues? A little bit. Um, the course over ground from the satellite and the compass disagreed by about 10 degrees. Um, in a foggy day, it might be serious back in the days of sail, but nowadays with modern satellites all floating around up there that are unaffected by Compass Hill, it didn't really make any difference for us. Um, it was interesting to see, but we, we maintained our course because we're running on satellite positions, not on magnetic positions. Day, isn't it? It certainly is. Um, we've got um, not loads and loads of white caps, but we've got one or two white caps um, coming down. And we should have reefed earlier because we said, Oh, look, there's some white caps. <laughs> it wasn't until they actually arrived that we thought, No, let's get another. <laughs> another reef in whereas we should have seen the white caps and thought let's reef but we're getting there um, we're certainly getting to uh, Boylesdale but it might be Eris Eric say Eriske Eriske because that's where the boat is taking us um, but um, you know it's always better to even though um, we've got uh, a tidal component uh, which is taking us south as well it's really the wind that's the biggest factor where the wind takes you that's where you're gonna go Oh, 
we're tethered, both of us, we've got our tethers on. The sea has got incredibly rough. The wind speed is up to over 25 knots, it was 27 or 28. And the swell is easily over 2 meters. Maybe more. What speed are we doing? Uh, 5.7. We're doing 5.7 with three reefs in. Like and we've got um, two in the front. Two in the Jenny, but I may reduce that. Yes. <sighs> but we're having to hand steer because um, uh, you have to look at the waves so that we can uh, ride them. Well, we're in Loch Boysdale, I think that's the correct pronunciation, and um, it's a small marina up at the end of Loch Boysdale, that's the name, and um, it was our objective to come here because there's good shopping, there's good internet, there's plenty of supplies, there's a little marina, you can get water, you can get electric, you can get everything you need here, and there's even a little taxi who will take you to the co-op, which is about four or five miles that way. And so we're fully stocked and supplied and all that. Um, it was also a place that has a north shore, so that the very northerly, northeasterly winds we were getting last night, which were, I mean, we were getting 4.7 with gusts of 4.8, just coming around the headlands here. And it was very uncomfortable. Gaynor had no time to put fenders on, because even coming up through here on the, on the islands, it was still extremely gusty. So we just determined that the simplest thing to do was put the bi fender on the front, one bi fender on the side, push the boat into the pontoon, leave the engine running and slam her against the side and she just sat there while we got all the lines on. It worked very well. One of the reasons that the wind was so bad in here is because of that hill just behind me. The northerly winds are coming from that hill and they're going basically toward you and the camera. They're going that way. Um, and when the hill, when the wind comes over the top of the hill, it just runs down the hill just like a river would and it picks up speed and then it comes shooting across here and you get all sorts of gusts and things. And on a still day with a little wind, when air cools on a surface like that, it rolls downhill like you'd expect. It's called catabatic winds. And last night with the cloud coming over the top, it, you could see how the wind was travelling down in exactly the way a catabatic wind would, although last night's was probably caused by wind being blown over the top, which is not quite the same thing. But the effect's the same. You get the cloud rolling down the hill towards you. And the only thing that stopped us having cloud and fog down here is at a certain height the air is warmer and the cloud, the relative humidity isn't high enough and it just evaporates again. But um, we're in here, it feels totally different today from yesterday. Yesterday we took a hell of a kicking out there. I think the, um, the difference between us now and us then, a couple of years back or even a year back, is that a day like yesterday probably would have reduced mild panic. Whereas by now we've reached the point where a day like yesterday just produces complete irritation. You know, oh, flipping forecast, not even close to right. But we sailed the boat. We knew we could sail the boat. We knew we'd either get here or air escape, which was our uh, reserve. And um, we just did it. We just kept an eye on every system. We made sure that nothing was overstressed. We know the boat. We know how she responds in these conditions. And like I say, we weren't worried. We were just irritated that what could have been a nice sail turned out to be such a pain to do. Well we did sail it Bev. We did, we sailed it here and here we are. Uh, the <laughs> While we were coming across, because we don't normally take the fender, the bow fender off. It's been 1400 miles since it was last off apparently. <laughs> it was a heck of a time but we don't normally take it off but um, while I was on the helm I said to Beverly, we're going to have to do something with the bow fender because basically we hit um, a wave and I could see the bow fender <laughs> rise above the deck. So um, we heave to. I am so glad that we practiced that. If you haven't practiced heaving to, do so because we heave to. Beverly went forward and um, got the bow fender and I'm just now fixing it and just making sure everything is is fine um it's a very good bike fender oh, it was highly useful um one of the videos that we watched uh before we 
came out was uh, Patrick Lane and the ramming the pontoon manoeuvre. Uh, excuse me, can you take that off the microphone that you've just dusted on? Right. Okay. okay. Right, one of the videos we watched before we came out. Yeah, one of the um, videos that we used to watch before we uh, started sailing ourselves was uh, Patrick Lane and ramming the pontoon technique. Oh, these. I put the bow fender back on. Um, you know, it was just really lashings that had come undone. I put that on. I put one uh, fender on the side. That was all I had time for. <laughs> and basically, Beverly rammed the pontoon. That sounds very vicious. Come here. Okay, you I... rammed it gently. In tick over. In tick over. But why do we only have one fender on the side? What's going on there? Oh. Normally, when you come in, you can you've got time to put fenders on and stuff like that. It was so bouncy; there was no way that I was going out. I mean, so I was lashed on as it was, um, and then I literally had four boat lengths, maybe not an awful lot, um, to put something on. So bow fender, one fender. And that was about it, really, and we were in. The entrance is very close in this, this marina, isn't it? It is. It was very close. We didn't have much time, so... Um, but luckily, there was a man uh, that I could throw a line to, so uh, that's exactly what I did. wanted to anchor tonight um, so um, we came down and the, one of the places that quite a few people recommended to us uh, was Erikse. Eriske. 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 Uh, and I was really really interested in going there because that's where um, the, a ship called the Politician <laughs> went down <laughs> with quite a bit of whiskey <laughs> on board and uh, is actually the inspiration of the film Whiskey Galore. Drunken politician becoming a car crash. I mean, what's new, what's new about that? <laughs> exactly. So I was really interested. So uh, we actually went in um, and um, I wanted to, I particularly wanted to anchor and um, the only place that we could anchor was going to be a lee shore um, and the other area that's uh, marked on the chart as anchorage is uh, got foul uh, moorings and things like that so I was like mm, not really so I'll come out here and um, I'm on this little anchorage called oh, Lingay. Lingay Island. Ling, it's just behind Lingay Island. Um, there's a couple of uh, there's a fish farm in here with you, a couple of pots, um, but it advises you to put down the trip wire. Um, is it called a trip wire? Trip or? line. A trip line. A trip line. So we've put one of those down, and hopefully this time we will not run over it because the last time we put one of those down was the time we. <laughs> We've made changes, haven't we? We have made changes to our trip line. This this one has a weight to keep it well down. <laughs> yeah, and we'll show you those um, at some point. 
So we'll be picking it up tomorrow and we'll find out how it all works out then.